Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a relatively interesting concept for a telescope that might increase magnification, allowing us to see exoplanets with more detail. So let's talk a little bit more about this paper and welcome to What The Math. And so here the paper is actually in the description below. This is by David Kipping, who is a very famous astronomer. But before I explain to you what he proposed, let me talk a little bit more about these unusual ideas that other people proposed, which is actually what his paper is based on as well. So this right here is known as the Einstein's ring. This is the ring of light that's formed when a, um, an object in front of something we're looking at um, creates a kind of a gravitational lens. Basically, it bends the light rays in such a way that they form a ring when we're looking at the object, while at the same time magnifying things quite dramatically. This is actually how we were able to discover an actual planet extremely far away, like billions of light years away from us, by accidentally seeing the planet pass in front of an object that was what's known as gravitationally lensed. And so one of the previous ideas that were really innovative and even won an award, and this is actually uh, an image created by the so-called aerospace organization, involved creating a kind of a telescope that had our sun as this gravitational lensing device that would then cause all of the light coming from a distant object to bend due to gravitational lensing effects and create a focal point roughly around 550 astronomical units away from the sun. We could then place a bunch of telescopes right here uh, at this distance and capture the light coming from an object in a distance, which would then allow us to see planets with a ridiculously high magnification of roughly around 100 billion times. That would make it the most accurate telescope ever and allow us to see the resolution equivalent to only a few meters across from a distant planet. Now that's of course something we can't really achieve just yet, simply because First of all, this would require something like 30 years alone just to send all of these telescopes in this location. We also need to plan everything very accurately. We would need a lot of funding and this would probably require new research into how these telescopes would communicate with each other and then send data to Earth. We just don't have that yet, but the idea is pretty brilliant, even though we're still not there in creating this. But David Kipping had another idea, relatively similar to what you see here, but using another effect, another effect that bends light. You might be familiar with this. If you've ever placed an object, like for example, a straw into a glass of water and then looked at it. The phenomenon I'm referring to is of course refraction or the bending of the light when it enters from a medium to a slightly less dense or more dense medium. Now, this is probably the most rough explanation here, but it kind of shows you that a light wave entering um, another medium that's slightly more dense will be refracted by a certain angle. And this angle is usually constant depending on the temperature and depending on the frequency of the wave or light. And although the light prism is probably the most uh, popular example when it comes to refraction because it really shows you how different colors of light can be refracted by a slightly different angle creating basically this rainbow effect, refraction itself is everywhere around us. This is an example here as well. Here's another one and there's hundreds and hundreds more that should suggest to you that basically it's a very important property of light that is everywhere. And so it's kind of surprising that not many people thought about using refraction for a telescope. And this is what David Kipping basically proposes. He believes that if we were to place a telescope um, at a certain distance away from Earth, we could then use the air or the actual atmosphere of Earth to form a kind of an imaginary focal point that will be created by the light that's refracted from this and this thus turning the actual atmosphere of the planet into, well, basically a telescopic focal lens. And even though this idea is relatively similar to this here, using the sun as the object that sort of bends the light, in David Kipping's case, the distances involved here are not as dramatic as 500 astronomical units. The distance here would only be roughly equivalent to the distance to the moon. And according to him, uh, the distance of about 85% of the distance to the moon would be more than enough for the so-called telescope that I just created right here 
to be good enough to start functioning as essentially a telescope. And in terms of the size, it would only have to be approximately a meter or three feet in diameter to create the magnification equivalent to about 45,000 times. Now, just to give you a comparison, and this is totally not sponsored by these guys, but the most expensive and the highest quality telescope I could find on Amazon is this right here, $1,500. And it has a magnification of about 100 times less. And that's on a good day in a dark skies. Here, the telescope would be able to achieve much higher magnification pretty much at all times. And that's just at this distance. Technically, you could even place it up to about the distance of 1.5 million kilometers or the so-called hill sphere. And this is basically where the so-called Lagrange points are located. L1 and L2 are very common points for us to place different telescopes around, including the very famous SOHO telescope that is responsible for looking at the sun and pretty much sending us all of the solar data. In other words, the telescope could be placed anywhere from this far to maybe around this far. Now, technically, you can also obviously place it on the surface of the moon and use the moon as a kind of a stable platform for these telescopes. But in this case, we'll be only limited to a very certain frequency of light that will be refracted from Earth. In other words, the distance will determine what sort of light we'll be able to magnify. So for radio waves, for example, this is a perfect location. We can totally place a bunch of telescopes here and use the atmosphere of Earth as long as we have relatively stable atmospheric conditions to magnify things and create something equivalent to this here. This is the animation created by David Kipping to try to demonstrate what would be actually seen if we created this uh, telescope. So here you see a star passing behind Earth and Earth's atmosphere creating this very peculiar ring that's very similar to Einstein's ring that we then need to analyze to create an actual image of what we're looking at. Now he goes through a lot of details and also a lot of explanations on how obviously there's going to be other things we need to concern ourselves with, like for example, the temperature is a big factor, the cloud layer, and a lot of other atmospheric conditions. But overall, the idea here is pretty brilliant, especially because according to him, um, basically anything over about 13.7 kilometers above ground should be relatively okay to use as this refraction uh, lens. So we should technically be able to zoom in on a lot of exoplanets and also be able to see them. But there are still a lot of problems to be solved before we can start rushing into building these telescopes. There are things, for example, like the ionosphere of our planet that will definitely affect the light itself. Humidity will be a huge factor. So even for a simple observation, a lot of these calculations will be relatively complex and very advanced. But just the fact that we can use a relatively small telescope placed right here on the moon and then use the atmosphere of the planet Earth to try to magnify objects that are behind Earth is already pretty awesome and something that we definitely need to try doing sometime soon. Now, there is of course a very important limitation to all of this, and this is something that we will not be able to overcome no matter how hard we try. Like for example, if we were to place a telescope on the moon, we're only going to be able to see the stars and exoplanets that are right there behind Earth. In other words, it's going to be only in the plane of Earth-Moon orbit. We're never going to see anything that's like, for example, over there, because Earth is never going to be in that location. Since one of the better locations for this telescope would be in the Hill Sphere, or Lagrange point, the only Lagrange point that would make sense would be this right here, L1. And so that only means that we'll be able to see stars and planets that are in between here and Earth. So literally everything behind Earth, or the so-called stars of the ecliptic, basically the horoscope stars, the astrology stars. We might be able to possibly see some exoplanets um, in a lot of these stars that have become popular because of astrology, but obviously our interest in these exoplanets and these stars will be purely scientific, nothing to do with astrology whatsoever. Nevertheless, though, because a lot of these stars have already become pretty famous because of astrology, it will be interesting to see if there is anything interesting scientifically. And the line of ecliptic passes through all of these constellations and all of these stars along, so we will be able to pretty much see everything along this line, but nothing else outside of it. So this is unfortunately the major limit of this telescope. We'll definitely be able to zoom in and see everything along the path of the sun and be able to analyze all of those stars and planets in the ecliptic really accurately, but everything outside, like for example this star here, or maybe this star here, 
will never unfortunately be in the same line of sight as we need it to be. Unless, of course, we place the telescope in this formation, basically increasing its inclination. But in this case, because it moves around Earth relatively quick, we will not have enough time to take a look at some of these stars. The exposure time will be very minimal and it will be difficult for us to see certain exoplanets because the orbital speed of these telescopes will be high. So in that sense, there are still a lot of limitations to this telescope, but it's such a brilliant idea that we need to try it just to see how well it works. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. I just wanted to talk about this idea of a telescope and how one day we might be able to use it. Anyway, check out uh, David Kipping's paper in the description below. And thank you for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.